How exactly does someone become a billionaire? Most of the world's billionaires today have successful businesses in various industries, but the beginning of a billion dollar empire is hardly ever easy. Whether you take over the reins of a big company or begin your own small business, it all begins with a challenge. To echo our man of the hour, Steve Schwartzman, it's as hard to start and run a small business as it is to start a big one. You will suffer the same toll financially and psychologically as you bludgeon it into existence. It's hard to raise the money and to find the right people. So if you're going to dedicate your life to a business, which is the only way it will ever work, you should choose one with the potential to be huge. I guess the only question is, will you rise up to the challenge? It's especially interesting to see how they've risen through the ranks to achieve their financial success, and it's exciting to learn about how the events in their lives have led them to where they are today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Schwartzman's life. Who exactly is he? What does he do? And what is his claim to fame? Let's get down, let's get down to business. If you've been watching my videos, you're probably used to me giving a short history lesson on the life of our star of the hour. Today, let's shake things up a bit. I'm still going to do that, but let's leave that for a little bit later on. First, I want to talk to you about this company called, The Blackstone Group. It's an American alternative investment management company that's based in the Big Apple. Its private equity business has been recognized as one of the largest investors in buyouts over the last 10 years, while its real estate business has been building up its reputation in commercial real estate. The corporation has been growing and growing over the last few years, and it's safe to say that it's one of the largest and most affluent corporations in the world. In fact, as of 2019, the company was discovered to have 545 billion US dollars in assets under their management. The company has even invested in many other major companies across the globe. Among its most notable investments are Hilton Worldwide, Merlin Entertainments Group, Republic Services, Travelport and EQ Office. It also has offices around the world, employing thousands of skilled individuals who have been essential in building up the Blackstone name. However, while it may be one of the largest and most affluent corporations, it does have its fair share of controversy. The road to becoming a billion-dollar corporation has not been smooth, and the Blackstone Group has been found to do quite a few questionable business practices to achieve their stature. In 2019, the Blackstone Group was condemned by the United Nations after a report found that the corporation had mass-purchased single-family homes after the financial crisis of the early 2000s, and this had massive negative repercussions for families across the United States. They reshaped the housing market and took advantage of tenants by charging them exorbitant amounts for their rent and housing fees, and they were also known for aggressively evicting those who could not pay. Communities of color were the most affected by Blackstone's practices, and many individuals from these communities were found to be evicted and displaced. The United Nations also reported that Blackstone had used its significant resources and to undermine domestic laws and policies that would in fact improve access to adequate housing. They did this by spending roughly $6.2 million to get California's Proposition 10 overturned, which would have allowed cities to better control rent charges and housing fees. It goes without saying that Blackstone's business practices have greatly contributed to the global housing crisis. But wait, you're probably wondering what does all of this have to do with Steve Schwartzman? Well, Schwartzman founded it. Rather, he co-founded the corporation back in 1985 with Peter G. Peterson. The two had worked together at Lehman Brothers, and they came up with the idea for their company during their time there. The Lehman Brothers, as you may know, was a whole other mess. If you want to learn more about it and what went down during the last few months of the company, I also made a video detailing their tale of misfortune, so go check it out when you have the time. So, how did Steve Schwartzman get to the point where he had enough capital and experience to set up the Blackstone Group? Well, he was born Stephen A. Schwartzman to parents Arlene and Joseph Schwartzman on February 14, 1947, in Huntingdon Valley, Pennsylvania. He probably got his first taste of business from his father, who was a graduate of the Wharton School and owned this dry goods store called Schwartzman's. He began his very first business when he was just 14 years old, and he even made it a family affair by employing his two younger brothers, Mark and Warren Schwartzman, to work. Their business, a lawn mowing operation. Mark and Warren worked while Steve connected with clients and got them to procure the brothers' services. 
He then went on to attend the Abington School District in Philadelphia for his primary and secondary education. Surprisingly, for a business-oriented guy, Schwartzman had zero interest in math or corporate finance. He eventually ended up going to Yale University, where he took social science-related classes. He graduated from the university in 1969, and he served a brief stint in the U.S. Army Reserve before going to the Harvard Business School. After attending business school, Schwartzman found his first major business gig working at Lehman Brothers. This became his springboard to found the Blackstone Group, taking valuable learnings he had gained from his time at the company to set up his own business. And as they say, the rest is history. Schwartzman is known to be cutthroat in business, even having been recorded to say, I want war, not a series of skirmishes. I always think about what will kill off the other bidder. When I think about this statement, it reminds me of knights on the battlefield, trying to lay siege to a castle. It really is survival of the fittest. This type of attitude can be seen in the way that the Blackstone Group conducts its business, and this mindset has both its good and bad points, as you can see from the corporation's massive growth over the years, which has been coupled with debates about its business practices and methods. Recently, Schwartzman, who is a known supporter of ex-US President Donald Trump, made headlines when he condemned the mobs that stormed the US Capitol early in January 2021, calling it an insurrection and an attempt to undermine the Constitution. This was what Schwartzman had to say. The insurrection that followed the president's remarks today is appalling and an affront to the democratic values we hold dear as Americans. I am shocked and horrified by this mob's attempt to undermine our Constitution. As I said in November, the outcome of the election is very clear and there must be a peaceful transition of power. When his statement came out, netizens and the media noted how while he did condemn the mob, he stopped short of criticizing whatever role former President Donald Trump played during the whole debacle. However, it comes as no surprise. He had played a role in the former president's team as an advisor, and his position helped the Blackstone Group secure a whopping $20 billion investment commitment from the government of Saudi Arabia back in 2017. He was also part of the team that successfully brokered a new trade agreement with China, which was advantageous to the Blackstone Group because it promised to further open China's financial markets and allow Blackstone and similar investment groups to penetrate it. To date, Schwartzman has a net worth of $21.4 billion. While he does like living a life of luxury and is known to throw lavish parties every so often, Steve has dedicated a sizable amount of his money to charitable causes. In February 2020, he announced that he had signed the Giving Pledge, which means that he will be giving the majority of his wealth to charity. Schwartzman credits the lessons he's learned in life and business for his success. He emphasizes the importance of preparation and knowing your business inside and out. After all, according to Steve, the person who's the most ready for game day will be the one who wins. And win, he has. Sometimes, billionaires can be some of the most down-to-earth people you could ever meet. I know we may tend to think of them as untouchable beings who are far beyond our reach, but that is certainly not the case for all of them. In fact, Our Lady of the Hour is the perfect example of one such billionaire who is very down-to-earth and gives all that she can to those in need. Who is she? Well, in that video, we're going to be talking about none other than Miss Mackenzie Scott, one of the most affluent women in the world. But wait how exactly did she come upon her vast fortune? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in the video up on your screen now, so click away, sit back, and relax, see you in the next video.